Hello everybody and welcome to your latest Rangers review video. In this show we're going to be looking in depth at new signing Hefty. He has arrived from Fluminense in Brazil. He spent last season on loan at Apoel in Cyprus where he won the league incidentally as well. He's a player that Rangers uh, were hoping to bring in in the winter transfer window. Never materialised but he has uh, signed on the dotted line and he will form part of Philip Clement's side next season. To give us an idea of what we can expect from the Brazilian, Joshua has spent a great deal of time examining his past season. Uh, how's it going, Joshua, first of all? Yeah, going well, thank you, Derek. Looking forward to having a bit of a closer look at what people can expect from Hefty. Pretty exciting player. Uh, I, th I think our, our profile, only 20 years old. We're going to get into a little bit of, of what type of profile he is exactly, how he might fit into Clement style, who he compares to, how he compares with the likes of Tavernier and Ridvan, and hopefully give people a bit of a, an understanding as to, to what player Rangers have kicked off their latest summer rebuild with. Yep, it's certainly an interesting signing. I like that the age of the lad, just 20. Uh, he, he comes, never really uh, featured for Fluminense. Went over to Cyprus where a number of Brazilians play their football mm -hmm. uh, and has now ended up in Glasgow. Uh, the the comparison with Tav, I've seen mentioned on uh, social media when yeah. the signing was confirmed. He likes to bomb up and down that left-hand flank. And uh, But will he be a player that will be suited to Rangers, do you think, Joshua? Yeah, so to, I mean, obviously, as you and everyone else know, Derek, people love to compare players to people who are already at clubs. And I guess there is some similarities with Hefty and, and Tavernier. I'll pull up his profile map just to start. And I should say at the start of this video, if people want to go and look at these uh, graphics that we're going to have in GIFs throughout the video, they can do so by following the link in the description over to the Rangers review. And you can read the scout report on the website. But you can see in Hefty's heat map to, to the right of your screen, Derek, that he is someone who, who is more of an overlapping fullback than an inverted fullback. We'll, towards the end of this video, we'll get into how that corroborates with what Clement wants to do, because that's not an overlapping fullback, as I understand it, in the way that a Michael Beal or a Steven Gerrard would have used Barisic and Tavernier. It's quite specific to the way Clement wants to play, and there's a lot more variety to Hefty's game. Why I think he fits Clement's model is that Clement wants players who can progress the ball individually. And that's why you've seen him play Ridvan over Barisic, because Barisic was someone who, when he was in the final third, he could create really high value opportunities out of nothing. You only have to look back to the League Cup final, incidentally, under Philippe Clement when he, he crossed that uh, ball for, for James Tavenier to score. But he's not someone who's going to carry up the park. He's not someone who's going to get out of tight situations and drive in the field. He's not someone who's comfortable moving into different zones of the pitch. And while I don't think Hefty is quite on the level of Ridvan, who I think, if given the license, could become kind of that extra central midfielder and help your ball progression in that way, for the manner in which Clement wants to play and build up in the final third, as we'll get on to, I think Hefty looks like a pretty good stylistic fit. So there is maybe some similarities to a young James Tavenier in that He's a good runner with the ball, but he's faster. He's pretty dynamic. He carries the ball, I think, more like a winger than a fullback. He's actually, if you look at his stats in comparison to the rest of the Cypriot top flight, only one fullback made more progressive runs than Hefty, and that's looking at how he takes the ball effectively, not only from his own half into the final third, but from the kind of middle third of the pitch into around the penalty box. And no one attempted more dribbles than Hefty, who was uh, attempted last season. I've got it here, 4.56 dribbles per 90, which is a huge number for a fullback. For, for context, Derek, Ross McCausland averaged, I think, 2.7 dribbles per 90 for Rangers. That was the highest of any Rangers player who played over 900 minutes in the league last season. That's clearly something Clement wants to add more. He wants to add more profiles who are capable of progressing the ball individually taking their men on. That's why you've seen him introduce wingers into the Rangers team as opposed to the type of profile that perhaps Michael Beal was favouring. Hefty also crosses the ball a lot and he's, he's got a pretty good cross on him, not maybe Barisic levels, a fair amount of variation and he was crossing the ball a lot. Again, only one fullback was crossing the ball more than him last season. But I think, again, that's stylistic. He's not someone, as we'll, we'll show with gifts, he's not someone who's dependent on that to get out of different situations. He's very happy carrying the ball and I think carrying the ball is actually his best asset. If you look at his progression map here, which is just showing his passes and his carries uh, all the way back from his own third into the final third, you can see that he's someone who can take the ball on a run over a long distance. That's a standout trait for me. If you look at the, the two progressive passes and progressive runs, 
the, the, the two charts there, you can see just how far along the progressive run chart Hefty is in comparison, and that's comparing him to other fullbacks. He's someone who, who's more than capable of progressing the ball individually, very left-footed, doesn't really use his right foot at all, but he's pretty good at destabilising his opponent and being able to drive in field. He's got the power and the pace to overlap. So an exciting profile. We'll get into to how that actually looks in practice and then also how that could look in Philippe Clement's Rangers side next season. Yeah, I know you've got a lot of gifts uh, ready and uh, raring to go, but uh, that all sounds well and good, Joshua, going forward, good on the ball. However, can he defend? Uh, that is uh, the big question. Brazilians, uh, famously, uh, we know uh, some of the, the great Brazilians, Roberto Carlos on that left-hand side, Cafu on the right, love to bomb forward, but uh, can he defend when required? Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that because there is a couple of areas. You now, it's important to know that he's 20 and he, he's played a full season. Obviously, yeah. the, the separate off fight isn't going to be quite as strong as the, as the Scottish Premiership, but he's won the league there, he's, he's come from Fluminese and he's only 20 years old. So there's there's areas to his game we'll get into, it, especially his decision-making in the final third that, that are maybe a bit of a weakness. I think sometimes because he's very left-footed, that's, that traps his angles in the pitch and he's, he's better out wide because he's got a clear angle to play on his left foot as opposed to trying to play on his right foot. Again, sometimes against the ball, as we'll get into with the gifts, Derek, he leads with his left foot a lot, which can lead to him being wrong-sided. So he's maybe not quite as, if, if you were to look at him as a profile and, and ask him, do you enjoy attacking or defending more? I'm sure it would be the former. What I would say in response to that is he's going to need to do as much attacking, if not more attacking than defending domestically for, for Rangers. He has the profile, which is important in terms of his physical size, I think, to, to become a good defender. And at 20 years old, when you look at elements like his decision-making, especially when he gets into the final third, as we've shown a couple of examples, that is something you'd expect a good coach to refine with a player who's still so young. Yeah. So going forward, then, uh, what can what can we expect? What was the sort of standout highlights from him uh, for Apoel last season? Yeah. So I'm going to show a few gifts, and I'll, I'll play these through, and then I'll just uh, and I'll just pause them and, and take them back and kind of speak through what what I noticed from these gifts. But this is for me what hefty standout trait is, Derek, is getting the ball in deep areas outplaying his man and then carrying the ball through the circuit, through the thirds. So this is an example from a recent game where he goes down the line, takes the ball all the way into the opposition final third, makes the wrong pass, but the point being he creates a chance from nothing. I'll just play it through one more time and then I'll, I'll break it down and discuss a couple of points. This is this is an, something that Ridvan has in his game as well, that again, to yeah. compare to the players that Rangers have at the club, Barisic, it does not. If you've got a fullback here who can outplay what happens is, Obviously, the touchline acts as an extra defender, so often teams will try to press fullbacks by the touchline because it will mean... And, and this even happens with James Tavenier now by the touchline because he's not got the the legs that he did five years ago to always turn inside and run inside. And obviously, he's very right-footed. He's not left-footed. Hefty is very left-footed, but he has a little bit more pace and, and drive, which allows him to, as we'll see in a couple of examples, skip by his marker on the inside as well as the outside. But often what you'll see in these situations is a fullback get trapped here, but if you've got a fullback like a Hefty or a Red Van who can then play through pressure, it means that, you, that a lot of opportunities are opened up to you. Mm. It's very common if you look at his dribbles to see Hefty get the ball in these type of situations as the, the, the opponent tries to, to lock on and press and then take the ball all the way up into the final third. In this example, he goes past another man and he, he is when he gets to stop, top speed, he is really quick and does seem to have a pretty low centre of gravity for someone who is six foot. Mm -hmm. This is the, the, the point where I'd, I'd say if you're watching him, he needs work. In these type of situations, when he has created the space and he has opened up the pass into his winger, and it should be the this should be the simplest bit of the action, but it's actually where he gives the ball away. Yeah, And, and again, that is an area that is somewhat because he's very left-footed, so he's not that confident in playing a good pass on his right here, and he has to then open his body up, and that's when he becomes predictable because if he, he's trying to yeah. get the ball onto, onto his left foot for those angles. You'll, you'll also see him shoot from these positions quite quite often. But again, your overall point, if you're looking at this, I'd imagine as a scout, you're thinking, OK, what I'm focusing on here is, yes, his decision-making make, needs to improve. But if you've got a defender who can take you here to here uh, in a matter of seconds, then that's a pretty good uh, that's a pretty good starting point. Another example here, very similar, Derek, which I'll just play through. Again, pressed by the touchline. This time he moves on the inside. And this is, again, something you see in Ridvan's game. And it is important that he has this variation. Again, chooses the wrong decision, I would argue, in this situation where he shoots instead of playing 
uh, playing through his man and the, the winger in this situation who would have a free shot at goal. But again, look at where he gets the ball. Look at how he progresses the ball individually, how he quickly turns possession into attack, which is very in line and very in keeping with what Clement wants. Taking the ball from this position here through the busy centre of the pitch up until the final third where he needs to make a better decision. But the point being, he's still taking his team up a significant part of the pitch. And similarly here, if you look at, and I encourage people to go and watch a compilation, sometimes it can be a bit misleading, but it gives you a good insight into what his dribbling style is like. In, in this example, you see Hefty actually destabilize, destabilize his man to drift inside, more like a winger than a fullback. Again, gets into a good position. This time he does make the right decision, finds a striker, the return pass is poor. It's hard to show in a gif here, but what he's doing in, in, in this still here, Derek, is he's faking to go to the left and then go inside on the right. Because he's so quick on the outside and because he does have, although he's not right-footed, the ability to drive on the inside because of that low centre of gravity, because he's a really natural ball carrier, quite often you'll see his markers overcompensate from going on the outside, which gives Hefty the space to move inside, drive into more valuable spaces. And again, no coincidence, uh, coincidence that you see him popping up in the final third. A couple more examples, both of these goals or shots, I, I think they both end up in goals, arrive late on in the game, but to show that he also is someone who can really hang on the last line and, and, and be more of a driving winger from fullback if, ne if necessary. And obviously the more variation, the possible, sorry, the more variation, the better. This is a goal he scored and I think it was a five or six nil win. So th th there's little riding on the goal in this moment. But again, it's notable, you'll see in his game, when he does get on the outside, and this ultimately buys him space on the inside at other points in the game, he has yeah. the ability, the pace and the power to drive past opponents and get shot away. And this is uh, another example, if I can get the right gif up, uh, of a goal he scored again, hanging on the last line. In, in this example, late on in the game again, getting on the ball in the final third. Probably, although this is late in the game, another example of his, his decision-making, which needs work because he shoots here instead of finding a cross, <laughs> which is probably easier. Now he scores, so that's fine. Yeah. But that's something they'll need to be refined in his game. But just the final point on his in-possession game, Derek, there's such a big difference, and people will know watching, everyone will know watching this, when you watch a footballer and he's fast, but he doesn't know how to use his pace effectively against like a high line. So, so think of someone like Fashion Sakala, who is yeah. so quick when he got going, but how many times did you see him, to take it in a Rangers context, run over the top or curve his runs or use his pace effectively off the ball? Now, on the ball, it was a different story. He could carry the ball pretty effectively. But Hefty can bend his runs. He can use his pace really effectively. And, and that is a, a trait that I think really stands out when you're watching him. There's a difference between watching a quick player and the difference between watching a quick player who knows how to use their speed and, and with and without the ball because he is such an impressive ball carrier. That's something that stands out. Weaknesses, the decision making that we've already touched upon. Yeah. Hard to tell exactly how good he is in, in a duel um, for, for, from not watching him that regularly. But as mentioned, he does have pretty significant size for a fullback. This is one other thing that just stood out when I was watching him. If you look at this example, and Hefty is outlined in white instead of yellow this time, quite often because he is left footed, he'll get wrong, get wrong sided. Um, mm -hmm. when he's going in for a duel in these situations. So instead of backing into his man directly and trying to attack the ball with his right foot, he'll try to attack the ball with his left foot, which can lead to, as happens in this situation, being turned a little bit too easily. But again, he's 20 years old. Rangers are know they'll be investing in potential as well as hopefully product. It remains to be seen what happens in the left-back situation over the course of the summer. But that's what stands out to me watching him. He's a really impressive ball carrier. He's got variation to his game. He carries the ball more akin to a winger or, or an attacker than a fullback. A few questions mark, question marks defensively. Lots to refine in his decision-making process, but at 20 years old, he has a lot of time to refine that. Yeah, interestingly, he's younger than that, Robbie Fraser. Uh, yeah, which just shows you, doesn't it? Because we think of young players in Scotland, we think of a 23-year-old, 24-year-old as a young player, but you, you're yeah. absolutely spot on. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, it will be, it will be interesting that left back situation. Looks like Robbie will be extending his stay at Ibrox. Uh, remains to be seen whether Red Van will be part of uh, the plans next season. Um, but yeah, I think that is a looks like a, a good addition uh, for Rangers, especially for such a little outlay as well. So I'm excited about seeing him in action for Rangers. You can read that piece in more detail, folks, over on the Rangers Review website. Yeah, I just want to interrupt you quickly yeah. before we wrap up there. I want to, one, one more point. Sorry, I should have uh, I should have 
caveated at the start. Just one more point to, to point out. I've got a couple of graphs to show this. When we're speaking about overlap and fullbacks and, and saying it, you know, it's different from what Beeler Gerard was was doing. This is why I think there is quite a nice stylistic similarity with what Heft, how Hefty plays in relation to Clement's football. Because what we have seen under Clement is the fullbacks. He's playing wingers, so we've seen the fullbacks move inside. This is uh, mm. this is before Todd Cantwell's intentional or unintentional strike against Dundee from a wide area. But if you look at, I think it's Robbie Fraser's on the pitch at this point, James Tavenier, they're either, either side of Nico Raskin. They've moved inside the pitch. They're inverted fullbacks in, in the, the opposition half. If you're a fullback at the moment for playing for Rangers, that only happens in the opposition half. We're rarely seeing the fullbacks move inside in their own half. And why does that matter? If I take this example here, this is from a 5 0 win over Hearts, which is probably the last time Rangers played well domestically. The two players highlighted in white is John Lundstrom and Mohamed Diamande. Lundstrom is dropped into the defence in this example. The two players in yellow are Red Van Nielmaz and James Tavenier. The fullbacks, when Rangers build play, that is when they're trying to get into the final third, when they're trying to get up the pitch when they're trying to break the on pressure. They're still staying wide in Clement's system. He's not someone who's going to bring, I don't think, his fullbacks narrow to try and to to, uh, to try and aid his build-up play, to try and give you extra bodies in the centre, purely because he wants to get into the final third quickly. So you still it's still important to have variation, to be able to play inside, as we've seen with Ridvan in particular, to be able to move narrow off the ball, but why Hefty, I think, lines up nicely with what Clement is trying to do is he can get the ball in as Ridvan has the ball in this situation, these deep areas, and, and drive past his man and progress his team into the final third individually. But he's not someone who's going to, I don't think, move in as a second central midfielder because that's not Clement's style. That's not how he wants his fullbacks to play. They're going to stay wide in the build-up. They're going to move narrow in the final third to try and guard against counter-attacks, allow the wingers to stay high and wide. And Hefty has that variation to his game, which should fit that style pretty nicely. Yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, as ever, uh, as I touched on, uh, folks, go, you can go and read it in more detail over on the website. Um, you can see the ticker below. If you haven't subscribed already, uh, then now is the time to do so. Just £4 for four months. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. Big thanks to Joshua, as ever, for all his uh, hard work. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. And we'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.